as you say, I mean, I'm really interested, certainly, in, in subculture and the post, you know, the post and whatever, and, and, you know, the, I took a course on modernity, uh, mm -hmm. the modern, modern era and modern philosophy this mm -hmm. semester, and the professor said something very interesting, saying, what I could have done is I could have, basically, every week, we could have studied one modern artist, you know, Picasso, Gauguin, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, uh, whomever, I'm trying to think of that surrealist, and you wouldn't have learned a damn thing. Because you, by studying these sort of branches, you don't learn what is at the root of these things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And the very, you know, ironically, the very definition of these, these movements, these eras, is their variety. Is the fact that, I mean, the importance of the modern era and the postmodern era is, is the, the ability for things to to exist fully form in in such in such diversity, mm -hmm. and that's what's kind of interesting to me. It's just kind of neat to think about that. You know, I mean, it's it. I don't know. Well, I also think kind of in terms of musical taste, you see, there's definitely an element of the postmodern, especially kind of the postmodern condition of the self. You know, that you mm -hmm. that there's multiple selves that you can have staged at various times. Right. And in those multiple selves, you can have multiple multiple varying tastes mm, depending right, right. upon the self that's being you know, projected, projected the by the other self. Because you're never just, you know, right. you could be, you can always be the self. Mm. You know, there's the core self that maybe is alive and maybe isn't, right. and that's always projecting another self. But there's also the instances of where that self is working at Starbucks and has to project another self. Right. And, and it's, so it's, it's, I've always been interested in, insofar as the um, sort of how, how music and identity are interwoven um, in, you know, it makes sense when you're an artist, you, know, you really mm -hmm. come from yourself, you're a performer, you music, you are embodied, if you're not writing your own music, you're embodying mm -hmm. somebody else's, you're performing somebody else's music. Um, but when you're experiencing music with a group of people, what does that mean? You yeah. know what I mean? Like that, that's the stuff that That's the thing that's often me. ignored in scholarship, I feel, because this people often, good. especially like as cultural production as a whole, mm -hmm. people ignore the fact that cultural consumption is cultural production. Absolutely. Right. And so, <clears throat> I think of, Especially in the era of branding, whereby we don't mm -hmm. create so much as we define ourselves yeah. to other people by what we consume. I'm mm -hmm. an Apple person. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm yeah. not a Starbucks person. I bring my own thing in my, in my French, I use French press. I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I wear, you know, Doc Martens, like all these things that are choices, consumption choices I have made to signal to somebody else, mm -hmm. as opposed to being, to being, I don't know, to being Buddhist, to being, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like we're always in this post-Marxist shadow where the consumer doesn't have agency. He's just plugged into the machine. Yeah. And I see that in a lot of like, mu especially music like scholarship, like Timothy Taylor is, is kind yeah. of this Adorno kind of post-Marxist, where it's all about the performer. What the, per the performer is the only one with the agency to create meetings and Right, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 And so I don't, I, I don't agree with those. I think that that's kind of a thing that's being ignored, that by consuming music, certain musics, you build your own soundscape. Mm -hmm. and you have, with an iPod, you have agency Absolutely. over everything that you hear. I was saying that to a couple of friends of mine, and I was, I was saying it was like, you know, a couple of my older friends, you know, they download music and they download the whole thing. Uh, the ha whole album, and I was like, "That's not what people do anymore. People download. You know, they may uh, they may listen to the whole album in different parts, but people mm -hmm. make their own list. They make they make their their you know, do my laundry, you know, mix. They do make their you know, my parents are coming over. I can't have any bad words in the music list. They have their you know, mm -hmm. all these you know, these very you know, particular things which are frames and, and how manipulating these musics frames." particular social interactions, too, and so that's kind I feel of like we're taking that a step further, too, and I think of, of Anthony Giddens mm -hmm. uh, suggests, like, the postmodern condition of the self is that there's an excess of information. Mm -hmm. And so, in that <laughs> terms, <laughs> you, think of, you think of iTunes, especially, because you can make your own playlist, mm -hmm. but now people are buying 250-gig hard drives because they have 120 gigs of music. What do you do? Well, you create the genius button that, right. you know, selects all the songs like the song, one song that you want to hear, because then you don't have to commit to your choices. And you also don't have to explore. I mean, I'm a nerd where, you know, uh, a lot of the bands that I liked and, heard, have, you know, were not being played anywhere. What you had to do is you had to stay up till, you know, 10 o'clock on Saturday mm -hmm. night and listen to a college radio station or, you know, write, you know, you know, figure out what record labels had the bands that you liked and ask for a catalog. And yeah. the description. So there's this more. It was um, 
the sort of boundary to entry was a little mm -hmm. bit higher. So, and that's not to say like, oh, we, we were so much more dedicated <laughs> to our music, yeah. but I think that um, it creates another relationship by uh, the sort of desire for stuff, the sort mm -hmm. of delaying gratification a little bit. I think that that is important. And that gratification is, is important though, because especially if you consider someone like Giddens, because there's so much information out there. And if you don't like something you hear in the first 15 minutes, you can just, you can move on. Mm -hmm. you, you can go on to another album. I think that's how my experience with jazz was. And I started, I hated bebop. Mm -hmm. And I listened to big band stuff, and then I grew to like bebop, and I right. hated free jazz. And yeah. We were like free jazz, and then I hated Sun Ra. And then I was like, <laughs> then I was like, I'm gonna buy every Sun Ra album there is. And so, in, in a way, you know, it's, it's interesting to try and think about how that that happens. Because in a world where we do just flip to the next radio station if there's a song we don't like, mm -hmm. or on iTunes we skip to the next song, and, how yeah. do we discover new music? Because I know that I constantly discover new music, but I'm actively searching for. Yeah, and that's the thing is, it's a part of the that's what we do, is we mm -hmm. look for stuff, or we look for patterns and weird stuff. But the other thing is, it, in going back to what people are doing, but also on a compositional level, learning to write music that goes beyond the reflex. Mm -hmm. You know, learning to, I, I've been trying, because for a little while I was like, oh yeah, that sounds good, I'll write that down. And then I'm like, I don't like what this is doing. I, like, you have to, at a certain point, go beyond reflex and go to instinct. And it, to some people, they made it sound just like the same thing. Reflex is literally like a knee jerk reaction, like, oh, that yeah. sounds fun, let's go do it. Whereas mm -hmm. instinct is like, hmm, that might not sound like such a good idea, you know, in 10 minutes, you know. And that compositionally, type of thing. that's happening a lot too, but it's not, the problem is that, that class, the music composition as a study is always, is constantly tied in academia with, with classical music, your Beethoven, I know. Violin, you know, I and that trio. I know, I about how people get in a room and make music. Exactly, and so I, I know in my personal work, like I moved away from using musical scores. Yeah. I, I won't write quarter note, you know, eighth note music in a classical sense. I might do, do it to graph down. Do you use what graphs? Yeah, I'll use charts. I'll use charts. That makes sense. Or I'll use, I, yeah, I, but uh, if you, I mean, that, that's because of your instrument. Like if you were a violinist, you know, you probably wouldn't be able to, well, that's not true. No, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing is, you know, I'm writing, I'm writing pieces. I have a piece that I just, I finished up lately that is for an entire wind symphony. And it's all graphic notation. There's, ah. there's, I mean, there's stabs of music in it that say, say, play something like this or it's, but there's not, you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you know, right. in a pattern, play yeah. this. And so I think that's what you see in classical music. The problem is, is that, is that the little power the industry still has is very, Influential, and so well, they, yeah, I mean they hold the key to the top of the turret. Like, well, the problem is, is that they hold the key to the soundscape. They're the ones who control the See, mass I don't, soundscape. I don't, I don't really buy that because I think, because I, I mean, radio is essentially dead. Like the mm -hmm. basic radio. I mean, college radio is struggling along. They're doing okay. Actually, college radio I think is doing all right. But the mm -hmm. basic pop radio stations, when I, or the rock and pop radio stations, they play songs I listened to ten years ago. Yeah, you know. This is, you know, these are your old standbys. This is not so good for you, you know. Mm -hmm. These are, um, but I think uh, so. So to that end, I agree with you. But there's so many people have so there's too much information. So many people have access to so much stuff that people are listening. People aren't going to the radio station to get their music. They're not necessarily even going to iTunes. They're going to those blogs and those websites where people are, you know, people are making mixes. People are. Recommending obscure albums, or there, you know, people are on, you know, people are throwing parties, and this, you know, loft band from New York is playing. That's how music is getting into the sort of underpinnings of how things are going on. But I feel that access is also working against itself because if you think about a conversa the conversation we had earlier, where where youth are really the propagators of, of movement in cult in cultural streams mm -hmm. for the most part. The younger you are, the more likely it is that you're going to push new cultural items. And or at least make your own for yourself. Or make your you're own. Not gonna sort of but lay a lot of this experimental music is going on for in live venues, and there's no longer all there's no all age venues anymore, and so it starts to become the bar and scene as this scene of yeah. experimentation. But you have to be 21 in order to experiment, and so you have this small group of, of people who are moving it, but a lot of the older generation who control these outlets of soundscape are set in their ways in such a way that they don't want to experiment. And so yeah. we're in this endless chain of reproduction because 
people are becoming I think the less. Change is, is changing, but it's changing on small, isolated levels.